So I find a lot in those kind of in these kind of situations where we're talking about police brutality, you find a lot of people, black and white, like you said, to try to rationalize the situation. Did you or did anybody like in your immediate family, your mom, did anybody you or close to you kind of catch themselves rationalizing, even even if it was just for a moment? So I feel like it's deeper than just, you know, oh, well, I know that person and I, but, but I'm, but I'm also rationalizing this horrible thing that happened to him. Did anybody close to you ever have that moment or you I, yourself? Me, I, I know for, uh, to this day, I know for a fact, obviously that it was as deeper than just, you know, a simple accident. But even I will try to rationalize it in my head and I do it like, you know, this happened because whatever, whatever, but even I do it, but not in the way that I'm just like, I, must, I know that I wasn't doing anything. Nobody close to me, and most people were saying this is horrible. I just, it's on my Instagram too, or I don't think it is actually, but I have a post or a screenshot from back in 2014 when people were saying, they were posting on their Instagrams and saying, this happened to Phil, like he's a quiet guy. Like he doesn't, and I wasn't quiet, but I'm like, I wasn't in the streets. I wasn't like, mm-hmm. right? So they were like, Phil, like he doesn't do anything. He, he's telling him, how did this happen to him? It's, Cause I think even them were thinking like, how could he be in the streets to be shot by a cop? You know? So obviously I think that when you see that, it's like, was he doing something? Was he, you know, but those are just normal questions to ask. Once right. you get those, that's when people were like, Oh my God, what, how could you do that? And other people were like, I said, the classmate, well, she, before she realized, or I don't even know where she got that from that they were both black, even if they were okay. But you know, mm-hmm. To answer your question, nobody close to me did that. I did before I realized what it was, and still do to this day to an extent. And like I said, I saw a bunch of you know, just comments from strangers saying, "Well, he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't try to run them over or whatever." That's stupid yeah. stuff. So, you know, I feel like it's 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 deep because it it comes from like this deeply rooted conditioning that we have to defer towards police or authority and and just in general, right? Like. The police, they have the authority, so they, they have to be right, right? They have to be. Something something had to have happened for you to have uh, uh, gotten victimized by the people that I'm trusting to protect me. That's where it really comes from, and right? Like, that, police are supposed to be the protectors of the community, and it's not the case in our community. One of the reasons I share my story, and I'm pretty sure people know this by now, but you can call it a mistake. I don't want to use that word, but cops make mistakes. They're not always right. Like we've seen video evidence of cops straight up shooting, like like people get badged and they feel like they can do whatever. And the thing is they can because we watch them get away with it over and over. So they kind of can, unfortunately. It's an interesting dynamic, right? You have qualified immunity to take someone's life. Mm-hmm. Like That's- what, what it, it, it's an interesting thing to talk about because when you factor in things like race, and social class and, and, and you know, uh, um, economic status, when you weigh all of that into that power dynamic where now you also have a license to kill, you know, how do all those other factors play into that? You know, what, what outweighs your, your feeling of being able to take someone's life at your will, essentially? And, if and you don't people... want to talk about race plainly and just saying that there's a racial bias, at very least you have to understand what giving someone the green light to kill does to a person and their and their willingness to maim instead of kill mm-hmm. you know what i mean like there there there's levels to this you have a weapon you have the power so you decide what happens at that point right how do you how do you tell me that there's no implicit bias when the vast majority of them resort to trying to kill as opposed to to stop or maim and I don't know if that's a result of how they're trained or it's a combination of how they're trained. Cause I was on a podcast with two cops to be in it last month and they were cool. Um, but they told me from their perspective, a lot of cops are literally trained to kill first. No idea why, unless they have a, the other person has a gun, then I can not agree with it all the time, but I can understand it's either you or them. So, but if they're unarmed, which is the case, probably nine, maybe 10 times. Most out of, 10, of these stories, that's most of yeah, the cases. Armed. It's like, like I said, it's a result of, it's a combination of how they're trained. And also, and I believe in most, if not all, probably, but most cases, a combination of racial bias. Because yeah. again, in many videos, like at least five in the past year, even, 
of a white cop or of a white person. One one video is like the the white man ironically has a machete like Walter Wallace did, and he's like doing some karate moves and he's like got the pose and everything. And he gets like I think he got tasered. Another one, one is like literally attacking the officer and he get, he just gets jumped by a bunch of officers and they just detain him. The they way beat him up. Him. Yeah, yeah. Beat his ass, which that I agree with if he's over here attacking you, but he doesn't get killed. But we have like at least fifty examples of 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 people of my skin color, of our skin color, not getting that treatment. And it's not a coincidence. Uh, people don't realize that, you know, I'm sure you guys know this. People are just not realizing or learning or whatever. I just learned this about three years ago, that the origin of police wasn't just to stop crime because America wasn't always this equal country. We all know this, but was- people at the origin of police were originally slave catchers because obviously mm-hmm. you run away from your plantation or whatever. So the police were instituted to go catch those people because that was the crime. That was the main crime besides, and I don't think, I don't know for a fact, but I don't think that murder and all that stuff, like obviously it was illegal, but it wasn't, police weren't made for that. That wasn't, and I don't want to say this literally, but again, the origin of the police were, they were slave catchers. So there's always been a police against black people. There, that dynamic has always been there. I'm not saying that's the main thing, but that, that's a very old dynamic that we are seeing now. That's a good response to all of those people that say, well, you know what? I never personally had anything to do with slavery. My dad never had anything to do with slavery. Hell, my grandfather probably never even owned slaves. So why are we, why are we to pay for it in the form of reparations now? Why should we still be talking about slavery now? Because what you just said, an industry built on the, the, the materialization of human beings, right, on slavery, results in having to have a private, a private like the slave checkers, right, the slave catchers, mm-hmm. which then eventually turns into municipalities, like police departments. And then now here in modern days, you see all of these, these instances we're, we're three times more likely to go to jail. You know, we've, we're, we're, we're filling all the prisons. They, they shoot us more, more quickly than they do our white counterparts. And all of that has to be rooted somewhere. So if you don't start at the inception, if you don't start at the beginning, if you don't start where all of this shit came from, then you cannot even begin to deal with the problems that we have today. If you, if you don't understand that all of that stuff is connected, you, you'll never be able to un, unwind that, 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 that mess. Before that, I always thought, like, I never got sick. I never really missed school. I never had any problems, whether it was injury or disease, like sickness or whatever. So I just grew up not thinking nothing could happen to me, but just like, you know how before something happens to you, you never think it's going to happen to you? Yeah. And it does. You're like, you know, damn. So, you know, I spent a lot of time questioning why it happened to me. Um. And I'm still trying to find that purpose. Like, I think one of those was to have my daughter because she's so smart. And I think she's, she's going to be great when she grows up. And I mean, like, when I say great, I mean, like, she's going to be great. Like, she's, she'll have greatness. She has greatness in her, I believe. And so that's, I believe, one of my purposes is to raise her. And I don't know what she's going to do, but I think she'll be great at whatever she does. But not just that, I believe, whether it's to share my story or whatever comes from it. Um, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm real laid back. I don't, like... The most I get animated is when I talk about this or if I talk about basketball. Those two things are the most, what animates me the most. Otherwise, I'm kind of laid back. I don't really want to be famous like that, especially not for this. I mean, not that I don't want to be known for this, but like this isn't, I don't see this as a path to something. This is just yeah. me sharing and, um, your experience. And like I said, that, that's kind of how it changed me. Like I just see things differently. And uh, I believe I wouldn't be as mature if that hadn't happened. Not to say I'm glad it happened. Uh, the money's cool, but sometimes I wish, like I want my face back. Like you guys probably don't see, think it's that big of a deal and it's not, but I'm still struggling with my eye. And 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 I don't like the way I look sometimes. So that's something I'm still struggling with. Um, so it definitely affected my confidence a little bit, but by now I know for a fact it's not that bad because Every single time, not every single time, but whenever I ask a girl, do you see this? Do you notice it? You look fine. My mom tells me that all the time, but that's my mom. 
friends told me that all the time, bro, I can't even tell. So by this point, I know that it's not that bad, but what I see, cause you know, we're our own harshest critics. So what I see in the mirror yeah. or what I see when I take pictures, which is even worse, it's just bad, but it's all about perspective. And so I've learned by now that it's not that bad. Um, and uh, they're working through it. Like I'm over it, but I'm just, I'll never be really fully okay with it. Cause I don't like it. But at this point, like I'm over it. And like I said, yeah. I haven't, hasn't given me any trouble. So as far as not just eyesight, cause I can see fine, but also, you know, with, with people in general, um, it hasn't given me any trouble. It hasn't kept me back from anything. People don't look at me funny. They don't do double takes at me. So I know it's not, you know, what I think it is or whatever. So yeah. um, you mentioned your daughter, um, you know, if anything, is there anything that you want her to take from this? Is there anything that you would want for her to learn? Anything you would want imparted on her at all? From my story or from, from what I know? From the story, from what you're doing now? Uh, that's so, I could talk about that for a while. To, to make it short, for my story, I mean, obviously it kind of goes into just the, everything we've talked about today, police brutality and what police are, the origin of the U.S., what country she's actually living in, and how people are going to see her, how they're going to treat her. Hopefully, it changes things to by then, but I doubt it. So I want her to understand why people are going to see her the way she does and why they're going to treat her the way, she, the way they will, some people. And I, what I want to take away from this or everything I just said is that it's not you. There's nothing wrong with you. Because you know how kids are impressionable and like, there are stories about how they send kids home because their hair is out in the afro or whatever. I wish they would. I'm gonna pick a school in advance and make sure I'm not. I don't want. I don't want to see none of that because I. I said I'm laid back, not animated. That's one thing that I'll raise hell about is my daughter being mistreated or hurt. God forbid, because I will. I don't want to go to jail ever. But that's what I'm saying. Like I'm gonna make sure I don't have to end up in any situation to where I put myself in that situation because, you know, that's one thing I don't play about. But you know, to answer your question. I wanted to realize what country she's in, understand it, and not take it personal in terms of like, you know, oh, I'm ugly or whatever, cause she's not ugly at all. I know she won't be, but it's like, I don't want her to think, oh, my hair is not, you know how girls think my hair is not good enough. I don't want it to be like there straight, whatever. You can straighten it, but you know, your hair choice, whatever. I don't know about hair anyway, but my point is like, I want her to be confident in herself the way that I am not totally, no matter what happens to her. And I want her to, I'm kind of repeating myself because I don't want to go too long, but just really understand what situation she's in and to learn from what I went through. And I'm going to teach her all these things as she goes up. Uh, it's kind of different. If she was a boy, it'd be way, it'd be different. Even as a girl, it's happened to girls too, Korean games, you know, that's one mm -hmm. of them. Like, it's happened to women too. So, you know. Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. I, I was thinking of her too. Brianna Taylor. I don't know how I forgot those two. Brown was last year. So it can happen to women too. So I'm going to show her those things. And God, I hope it's not happening still by then. But if it is, I'm going to have to talk. I'm going to have to talk with her regardless. Because like I said, it's both men and women. But just don't be afraid of life. But also don't go around thinking, oh, nothing's going to ever happen to me because this and that. Like, you know, it's a crazy world. And I wanted to know that. I'm going to be very honest with her. Not expose her to too much early. But she's going to know what she needs to know, I believe, when she needs to know it. So, um, I just wanted to ask you one last thing because it was like one piece that I don't think we got out of that story. What ended up happening to the cops? Was it any other legal proceedings going on with them criminally or what, what happened? Yeah, I think they were on like death's duty. Okay. You know, that goes. They administrative leave. They still got paid for, I don't know how long it was. I think it was a couple months. But I heard from a friend of mine that they saw in the news or in an article online that they are back on the force. But uh, yeah, they're back in the force. Nothing really happened to them. You know, that's probably my fault. I should have just, not that I should have gotten fired or anything, but I should have like, you know, really just followed up on things that I was told. Hey man, and, I'm gonna absolve you of that right now, man. It, it's not your responsibility to hold them accountable, bro. It's not. Unfortunately, I'm take that burden off for you now. Like people like me are the one that care about it the most, because police chief and all them, they don't care about that. They, you know, they protect their own. So, yeah, you know. No, it's not, but it's like, I could have done something. I don't blame myself and beat myself up about it, but it's just like, you know, I just think I maybe should have, you know, if I could go back, I would I would go about it differently. 
and really follow. I feel through. like this. I feel like this. You speaking up is doing your part. So I feel like that in itself is enough to start keeping that awareness, not just in Philly, but across the board, because now you're using your platform to speak out more. So I, I get that you might feel that you should have in that moment, but in that moment, fam, that's a crazy situation just from how you played it back. And I think now that you have the courage to speak about it, it's just enough for it to do what it has to do and manifest in the world, dog. So salute and to you, dog. Like salute to you. Bro. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Like you said, do your part. That's literally what the words I use usually. Um, I'm just, I know it, but I'm just trying to do my part. I don't know if you guys have heard the story. It's an analogy about, uh, it's this boy on the beach and it's the beach is like littered with starfish that got washed out by the ocean or whatever and the boy is you know throwing the starfish i tell this story on every podcast by the way so if you guys hear me say it again my bad. but oh, good. Uh, the, the boy is <clears throat> he's throwing starfish uh out into the ocean and a man walks up to him and says what are you doing and the boy says i'm saving i'm saving the starfish and the man looks at the beach and he's like well there's millions of starfish here how are you gonna sit here and save them and the boy responds by picking one up and throwing it into the ocean. And he's like, well, you see that? I just saved one. And then he does the second, third, fourth time. And the point of that story is, it doesn't really matter how much you're saving, as long as you're taking steps to save one after another. And by the time you're done, it might not go to a million, but you've at least saved lives, one. And two, who knows how many you saved? Maybe the boy got to 1,000, 2,000, we don't know. But the point was he impacted someone, or a starfish, but someone. Mm -hmm. I, I think of that story a lot because you know, I, I'm not going to reach a million people. I'm not going to like, you know, change a bunch of minds or whatever. But if I can save one person's life, and I'm probably not going to know about it because, you know, but if I can save one person's life or change one person's way of thinking or may help somebody realize something, then it's already mission success because that's, I never thought I was going to do some big thing with this. It's just a matter of, like the story says, impacting one after another after another. That's really all it's about. So, like you said, just doing my part. I can't just sit here and not say anything after seeing it happen for so long. I'm mad it took six years, seven years, or six years, but, you know, uh, I'd be damned if I went the rest of my life not sharing the story at all. Like, that'd be kind of crazy, in my opinion. So, um, I appreciate you sharing it with us, bro, for sure. I appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, for sure. We definitely appreciate everything you're doing out here. Um, as a podcast that talks about these sorts of things. It's, it's really interesting to kind of hear somebody's story that, that actually went through it. Um, so we thank you for, you know, giving us that, that story and letting us know what's happening. Thank you. I appreciate, like I said, appreciate, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys having me and letting me talk for as long as I did, because I didn't mean to talk this long. But you know. Nah, man, you gave us a, good, a bunch of good content. But, thank you. What's the platform much for, uh, dog? Ramble and go on and on. It's, you know, it's a story, so, and like I said, I definitely want to come back if you guys ever give me a chance, because, like, yeah. where there's the riot, the new presidency, what Trump's done the past four years, history in general, because I'm taking a class now, and I'm learning new things every week, and it's really opening my eyes to the country I live in. Like I said, I want my daughter to know, I want her to know everything I'm learning right now, and grow up with that, instead of learning it when she's 26, 27, like I am. So, um, definitely want to come back, and I don't know how long, but teach you or not teach you guys but like show you guys what i've learned and also what i'm about to learn because there's a lot coming up i see the schedule we're about to go into civil rights in a couple months in a couple weeks i'm sure that's going to really open my eyes more because i know about it but i don't know everything so i'm sure that's going to be even more eye-opening news or things that i learned so definitely want to come back at some point and uh you know teach if not you guys then your listeners or anytime whoever. bro and anytime. one last one last thing um for those like i mentioned i posted pictures of my story that was the first time i shared it publicly because only people that saw that were close friends and family and i decided to supplement what i'm talking about i could also you know show people what this is so uh i wanted to share my instagram it's uh phil holland with two underscores um those are too easy to spell names so i'm not gonna really spell it but phil holland two underscores if you go down you can see like my face wrapped up, the picture of my leg, me walking again, and all that stuff. A lot of people saw that. And friends of mine that didn't see it before were just like, oh my God, I didn't know it was this bad. I'm just like, yeah. And I get messages from different podcasts about that. So I encourage, if somebody wants to message me, ask me a question, just because you're a stranger doesn't mean I'm not gonna answer. Look at you funny, like I'll answer if it's about the, you know, what, what, I, what I'm talking about publicly, obviously. So just wanted to share that. and. Uh, Tell people to feel free to look at my Instagram and look at the pictures. 
I'm not looking for followers. I'm looking for people to see those pictures and really open their eyes to what people are going through. Thanks for watching another Back of the Bus Squad episode. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you want to check out another episode related to this, go ahead and click that video to the left. And if you want to catch up on some of our other episodes, make sure you click the playlist below.